for some reason, I want to talk to Frank. Frank okay. Zur, uh, USA, 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 uh, the existence of God. You're Is it plausible? There. You are on the, you're on the atheist experience. You're talking to Shannon Koo, Koo Shane and you're, Koo. Talk, you're talking to Johnny P. I don't know. Is it plausible? Tell us. Tell us what you think. Thoughts. Hello. Frank. Oh, said, uh, the, the reason, um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yes, we can now. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, to pick up on where the left call, <clears throat> the last call they left off, um, the reason that energy can't be the eternal force behind the universe is because entropy, uh, entropy, the way energy works is the longer it, it goes into a system, it creates disorder, it creates randomness. Uh, we know this from physics and chemistry. It's within a, uh, it's closed, to, within a closed system. So, yeah. that's, Everyone you're, knows that. you're ignoring the first law of thermodynamics, which is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Right. But in a closed system, right, entropy but just it means also, that the energy will leave that system, not that the energy ceases existing. I'm sorry. They always leave that. Oh, there is. Go ahead, Shannon. Sorry. No, that's all. That's all I had to say. Is there, everybody always goes to the third law for thermodynamics, skips right over the first one when they're talking about energy. <laughs> energy can either be created. Okay, well, 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 that's fine. Right. So, uh, do you think the universe is a closed system or an open system? I think the universe is probably a closed system, but that doesn't mean that which would explain probably the singularity because okay. the energy, like once it, I don't think energy. I don't even know how to conceptualize the idea of energy being destroyed, like energy ceasing to exist. Mm -hmm. I think that it can like dissipate like over like a larger space, like where it can't do as much work because there's nothing for it to act on. But if that's the case, then it kind of like could contract back in. Like it could be the case that there's a consistent like expansion and contraction, but that's not why you called. Mm -mm, no. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> You called for something different. The existence of God, is it plausible? So yeah. you were piggybacking, but that's right. not what you called I, in. I so think, I, I think I, I think that, that kind of ties into what, what you guys were talking about, um, okay. about energy and how the energy could be the eternal force behind the universe. Because, you know, like you say, it can it cannot be destroyed. It cannot be created. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure that that's necessarily 100% what I believe. I was just using it as an as an example for the sake of that conversation. But yes, it could be. Could be the case. Not a physicist. Okay. So what about the existence of God? Tell us about that. Tell us about your thoughts on the on the plausibility right. of the existence of God, Frank. When you consider the uh, the energy behind the universe and consider what it's what it's created, this this consciousness and all this life and uh all this beauty and the art and all these things we have in the world. How can That's you great. look at it as like a system of energy? Is this a How, look at the trees argument? A fire that's burning, yeah. a fire that's burning yeah. or a, a swirl that's happening from gravity. That's, I think, you know, that's a little short sighted and not to be offensive or anything, but, but no, what no, if I made the opposite side of that argument? I said like, what about, you know, children with cancer? What about like parasitic animals? What about destruction? What about natural disasters? How can you believe that, you know, a God would do that. And it would seem just as banal and trite if I did that as what you're doing right now. You're just saying, hey, I see beautiful things and I would like to attribute that to something other than me be having, you know, independent appreciation of those things. I would like to think that those things were given to me to appreciate because I like that feeling better than not yeah. feeling like it was something that was specifically created for me. My perspective, I think, is slightly left self-centered. I don't think that mm -hmm. that was created for me to appreciate. I think that it happened and we learned to appreciate because we exist within that system. Yeah. And appreciating beauty is just like something evolutionarily that uh, was beneficial. Just... Yeah. I I'm with I'm with Shannon. I don't um, I don't need to be the star of the show of the universe or one of them. I don't need to have the universe created for me and and some mission. Uh, that that uh, a divine being uh, has in order for the the universe to be amazingly more complex and uh, majestic than it than it is. I can just be a mote of dust in a vastly expansive cosmos, and there could be no purpose to any of it, and it could still be just as beautiful. I was I was walking down the street the other day, and I was looking at some damn flowers. And I was like, wow, look at how beautiful that is. It was a little misty, a little rainy. 
you know, and I was marveling at how the rain seems to make the flowers uh, all that more brighter and lively. I don't need there to be a, I don't want to be insulting. I want to, I don't want to say sky daddy. I don't need there to be a cosmic father figure out there in order for it to be beautiful. I don't, I don't need it. I don't see what it adds. I do not see what it adds except to my own ego that all of this was created for the fate of my so-called soul. I don't need it. What is thy response? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think, um, that's what I was saying. I, I don't think it's an egotistical cool. thing. I don't think that beauty was made for me to appreciate. I think that Good. beauty and love, these things are regardless of whether or not we appreciate them. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I, I would even contest that. It seems to me that we appreciate beautiful things because those beautiful things are like signs of a, of a nutrient rich environment of uh, we, we find the things beautiful that are what well, in large part that are conducive to our own individual flourishing, clean water, fresh air, um, clouds in the sky suggest that there's going to be precipitation. I would I think plants are growing, which means I could probably live off some of those plants. I can eat the berries. Uh, I see beautiful animals. Um, you know, I guess sometimes those animals are you know, <laughs> treacherous to us, but uh, largely the presence of, of, of healthy animals are a sign that there is enough enough resources for a human to survive. What things do does 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 humanity find beautiful that are uh, devastating? I guess I suppose um, various cosmic things like stars that we really can't touch, black holes. Again, we can't get there, at least not yet. Um, probably volcanoes are kind of pretty too. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's the other way around. I don't think that it's a, I think that we, we are, we are conditioned to find the things that are beautiful and I'm probably wrong about this, but that's how, that's how I see it. So, and I don't find it limiting. I guess that's the point where I'm going is I don't find any of this limiting. I find it, it doesn't have a nice punctuation mark at the end of the sentence that, that therefore it's all tied up in a nice bow and that I have a place in the universe that is ordained before I was ever on this earth. Uh, but nevertheless, there's a kind of beauty to that too. Like a movie that ends without a satisfying ending. I have to carve my own way. There's never going to be a um, uh, a trite little finale. There's just going to go on. But but I'm rambling enough. Please continue your thought if if you right, wanted to just, continue just, that, Frank. Just to get down, just to get back to the uh, the, ba the basic uh, you know the argument we're talking about here, which is sure. the possibility of God. I think. Entropy. First, I, I wanted to bring that up because <clears throat> what's her name there? Shannon was was um, acting like energy to be the cause of the universe, old, but because good old of what's the her name? Entropic <laughs> nature of energy. I, I don't think that's um, that's plausible. But okay. I also okay. the blind, the blind I don't think argument, God's plausible. We, we understand yeah. what is created by by what it, what we see, what like what we know. Uh, but we we can see something that is created and something that is not created something that forms by nature and something that was molded by the hand. Oh, oh there's, there's that, there's that old, there's that old argument there yeah, is well, that if everything is created, then how can we make a distinction between those things that are created from those things that are the product of nature, right? If everything is the product of God's right, divine right. handicraft, then we shouldn't be able to tell the difference or, or, or arguably we would have difficulty doing so. But yeah, we can tell the difference. There's a mountain there's, there's that's a the product of erosion, and I guess, okay. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Right, I think you're right. you're, you're erosion Go ahead. on a mountain will never form um, a thought. Uh, erosion on a mountain will never form a life. Um, there are some things that we can tell are created when we look at things like watches and computers and oh you know things that ha have been crafted. There's a difference mm -hmm. between you know the physical material. And What's the difference between something that's been, been engineered by, by human hands and material. something that has been like, so you're saying, yeah, I, I get it. I've heard the watchmaker mm -hmm. argument before. Yes, yes. I, told, I totally get it. So what, uh, what my question to you would be, so you're saying that there is some sort of earmark of um, something being crafted by design versus something being um, a, a product of nature, right? 
that's what you're saying. There's some sort of earmark. There's right. something about it. There's just something yeah. about that, about, you know, babies and flowers and, and stuff that clearly they were designed. So I guess my question to you would be, what is that earmark? What is it? Well, we could, what we is call it about? It that. I don't know. You, you can call it. No, 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 no. I'm not. Design. You're talking about who you think made it. I'm asking you what the difference is, like what the substantive difference is. Like you, you can tell something is designed because X. What is X? Because it has certain properties. Like uh, what are those properties? Interdependent systems. I think is a good start when you have, you know, okay. interdependent systems when you have. Uh, like a motor or, or a servo motor when you look at a robot even okay right a robot is nowhere near as complex or as intricate as a human being um, so if something doesn't have an inter so obviously one of those you can systems look at it that you described it cause it wasn't caused by oh, okay cool yeah i'm with you so you're saying that you know the biological things so things like people and plants you can tell that they were created because they have it's like ex systems that that they that they use to operate, right? Right, informational. Systems yeah. Okay. So, well. what about it's rocks? Did God mind. create rocks? Did God create rocks? Did God create water? I personally, I personally believe he did, but that that's going to be a. But they don't have the earmarks so that you just described I, as necessary for design. You just described those as the earmarks necessary for identifying something that has been designed. They don't have those earmarks. So how do you extend it over them as well? Well, when you look at the, the rocks of the earth, for example, or the earth as a rock, maybe it's mm -hmm. a better example. Then you so can even see that a rock was designed for. Now it. we're extending it to the entirety of the earth and the universe. So you just think that everything is designed then, right? Well, it God seems like once I start, you, once I start to step you back from your argument, which is just basically things that are complicated are obviously designed because otherwise, how could they be complicated? Right. That's that's the essential part of the watchmaker argument is like complicated things look no, complicated. No. So somebody must have made them. But what, once I step you all the way back, it's not just complicated things that you think are designed. You think everything was designed, the entirety of the universe. So based on your perspective, you're, that's always going to apply, whether you pick up a rock or whether you're looking at a baby. They both have the same criteria for you because you think that God created everything. And so th that's where the substance of your argument goes away for me is because mm -hmm. you are you are saying God created everything and saying that the reason God created everything is because everything is complicated and complicated things were obviously designed. It's like an anthropomorphic argument. You're saying humans are capable of doing stuff, making things, making complicated things. We don't have an example of complicated things that that weren't created by humans. God must be like a human. I think that people and biology in the universe is complicated. Therefore, something like me that thinks like me, something that has thoughts and cognitions must have created all this because I don't, I don't understand how it works. It's complicated. And that just doesn't do it for me. Like, yeah. Less thought, less thought, Frank. And, and this is, gr you're great. Uh, right. We got to do have to move on. I, I really, I'm really enjoying this call. It might not look like it, but I am. That's, that's Johnny's <laughs> resting call face. Um, yeah, resting. no, I, I, just, <laughs> right, I, I just want to leave it off with my final thought here then, which is that sure. it's not so much a matter of complication. Um, I think it's easiest to see it when you look at something as complicated as a human being. Um, I, I do believe the whole universe was was here by design, um, mm -hmm. and you know I think that I, I only bring up the complicated thing uh, because it, it's easier to see it <clears throat> in, in in the flesh of a living being than it is to see it on a rock on a mountainside. So. That's, that's, well, I mean, I agree I with you. That's why I pointed it out there. because that's where it falls apart for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I get what you're saying. I just um, not there with you. I um, what I see in the form of the of the human body is a, a an evolved creature that has some things that kind of sort of work, and some things that kind of sort of work don't work at all. It falls mm -hmm. apart for many many reasons. We 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 substitute in glasses. Uh, artificial oh, limbs. Don't get me started on human eyes. Human so eyes, all these things. Stupid forever. <laughs> it, it, it looks like we're really not all that different from like the way that beaches form. We're just the, the result of, of of forces over many, 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 many centuries and thousands of years and millions of years. But Frank, so much, thank you so much for your call. Call back. Sure. Call back, Frank. 